Hey guys, today I'm filming my Throwback Thursday of my July favorites from 2014. If you guys have never seen this video from me before, I'll have my playlist linked down below. And basically, I'll be re-reviewing all the products they featured in my favorites video from two years back, letting you know my current thoughts on those products, whether they are still favorites or whether I have replaced them with something I prefer. My inspiration for this series is Kristen Game. I'll have her channel and her playlist linked down below. I will also link down below the original favorites video and I will list and link all the items that I'm mentioning. So really quick, a couple side notes. As you can see, I'm in a different location. I did recently move. I'm going to have a whole update video for you guys coming soon with all the details. Also, you might be able to tell my voice. I'm a little bit sick. I hope that my voice does not bother you too much because this is going to be a very, very long video. I have so many favorites. So I'm going to try my best to sum up my thoughts on each product. Hopefully not ramble on too long. This is still going to be a very long video. So please bear with with me. So my first spirit was a technique that I had heard about from Wayne Goss or Goss a makeup artist. So in this technique you apply your face primer and then you go over top of that with a loose foundation powder or a loose setting powder and apply that with a big fluffy brush. The products I use for this technique would be the NYX Shine Killer Primer, the NYX Mineral Set It Don't Fret It Loose Powder in Light Medium, and the Real Techniques Powder Brush. So with this technique technique, you were supposed to apply your primer, apply the loose powder, and then put your foundation on top. Now, this is a concept that seems so taboo to me because everyone always says you never put liquids over powder. Well, this technique seemed to work and there was no issues with the liquid going over top of the powder product. So what that did was create a nice, even textured base under your foundation. For me, it made my foundation just glide on so much easier, very smooth and very even. I didn't have any places on my face that were sticky where the texture might be a little bit different. It was completely even, so I did like that fact about it. It went on really smooth, but it didn't really prolong wear of my makeup, and it didn't do much for me. I did continue to do that technique until I used up that powder, but after I used up the powder, I never continued on with the technique. It was super cool and fun, but I don't think the results were so amazing that it's something that I would continue doing now, so that technique is no longer a favorite. My next favorite is the Estee Lauder Dub Wear Foundation in the shade 1W1 Bone. This is the lightest shade with yellow undertones. In the original video, I had showed you the old formulation, and to this date, the old formula is hands down the best foundation I've ever used in my life. Life, the new formula, in my opinion, is not as good. Even though I don't like the new formula as much as the old, the new formula is still one of the best foundations I've ever tried. This is a staple in my collection. I always want to own this. This is a really nice thin liquidy consistency that I feel really blends into the skin nicely. It doesn't feel heavy. This gives a nice solid medium coverage and it has a natural finish. This is definitely still a favorite of mine. I highly recommend it. My next favorite was a bronzer. This is the Bourjois Chocolate Bronzer in the shade number 51. I believe this comes in two different shades. In the original video, I said this was a warm tone bronzer, but it's not orange. I have no idea what I was talking about because this is incredibly, incredibly orange. This is basically if you mixed cocoa powder and tang powder, this is what you would get. It is so orange. And I really do like warm tone bronzers. I have the Milani Matte Baked Bronzers, which are very warm tone, but it looks fantastic on my skin. This is too orange. I haven't used this in a while, so I do need to play with it more, but I'm not really interested to because the color does not work for me whatsoever. Way too orange. This is definitely not a favorite, and I wouldn't recommend this. The next product was the contour I was loving at the moment. This is the Balms Bahama Mama Bronzer. I love the Balms packaging and their products, especially the cheek products, are my absolute favorite. So this is what it looks like. This is a fantastic cool tone bronzer that is fairly deep. I am able to make it work for my skin tone, but I think this is very versatile because it can work for fair skin tones all the way up to medium tan. I absolutely love this. I think this could be a really great cool tone contour without being too gray. I absolutely, absolutely love this. It is a really dark color. It can be intimidating, but if you use the right brush, the right amount of product, and you really blend it out, this can look amazing. I absolutely love using this to contour in the fall time. 
absolutely still a favorite of mine. Then I had two blush favorites, one matte and one shimmer. So starting with the shimmery blush, again, this is from the Balm. This is Hot Mama, which is super similar to NARS Orgasm, except this one has a stronger gold sheen to it. This is super, super duper smooth blush. These are not glitter particles. It is a smooth metallic shimmer. I love the formulation and this color is super pretty. I do really like this, but I don't think it is a must have. The color is pretty on my skin, but I don't gravitate towards it. And the reason I really like this at first is because Nora's Orgasm was supposed to be the blush that looks good on everyone. And while I think it looks good on me, it's not my most favorite blush. So I do recommend this. I think it is a fantastic formula. It is a really pretty color. I love wearing this in the summertime because it gives not only color to my cheeks, but a really nice glow. So I really do enjoy this, but it isn't holy grail amazing blush for the color. The other blush I have is a Tarte Amazonian Clay Blush in the shade Magic. This is part of a limited edition collection. This has been re-released in a couple different limited edition sets. This is a beautiful matte pink coral. I really do love this shade. I think it's so beautiful. And even though I love the color, I don't tend to reach for this for some reason. So luckily for me, the formulation of the mini blushes is way, way better than the full size blushes, which I do not like at all. But I do really like the formula of this and the color. I like this a lot, but I don't think I consider it a favorite because I don't reach for this one over other blushes in my collection. Next, I have a combination of products to create a certain technique. And this is the Illamasqua Powder Blush in the shade Intrigue, which is matte white. I know, a matte white powder blush, how strange. So I was using this in combination with the Real Techniques Contour Brush, which is part of their core collection face kit. And I was using this combination to clean up my contour. And you can also use this to brighten under the eye if you are very fair like me. If you are any deeper than NC, NW20 or 25, I don't know if this would work for you. So this does really help to clean up and create a really sharp contour, a really brightened under eye. So if you are deeper than me, you can make this work if you apply this first and then you go over top of it with your skin tone face powder to help take this down so it doesn't look like streaks of white powder on your face. So I definitely think a lot of people can make this work for them but you definitely have to be careful because you can look a hot mess real quick. This is super duper pigmented. This formula is so good. It really does make you want to try out Illamasqua powder blushes. I really wish that these were more readily available. So I use this technique every once in a while, but honestly, I don't do it hardly ever anymore because I do have to be so careful, even on my fair skin, that it doesn't look like streaks of white on my jawline. So this is a cool technique. It definitely, definitely does work, but I wouldn't consider it a favorite anymore. My next favorites were two different brow routines. The first was using two NYX products. This is the NYX Eyebrow Gel in the shade Blonde and the NYX B22 Angled Eyeliner Brush. I do have a first impression using both of these products. I'll have that video linked up here so you can see how these products actually apply. So starting with the NYX Eyebrow Gel, when this first came out, I was so, so excited because this was a drugstore dupe of the Makeup Forever Aqua Brow, which I had heard raved about on YouTube for years. It was such a unique type of brow product. And I really do like this shade blonde. It works well for my skin tone. It is very fair and very cool tone taupe. Now, I don't use this very often, and the main reason for that is because of the packaging. To use this product, I have to either squeeze it on the back of my hand or some other surface to apply it. And because of that, I hardly ever reach for it. I tend to reach for pencils the most, but other than that, I do reach for my pomades. And because I'm just digging into a jar, I can wipe the excess off inside the cap. That is not as convenient as a pencil for me, but it's more convenient than this. I need to make myself use this more because it is a great product. This is super duper pigmented, so you definitely have to be careful, but I don't use this enough anymore to call it a favorite. The brush, on the other hand, is a definitely a still a favorite. I do not know if they make this brush anymore. I know they recently redid their brush line. I'm sure they have the same style of brush, but I don't know if it has the same number and name. This is absolutely amazing. I use this brush 
with all of my brow pomades. It does a fantastic, fantastic job. I love the angle and I love how small it is because I am able to draw on natural hair like strokes with this brush. It is really, really nice quality. It's the only NYX brush I have, but it's amazing. I use it so, so often. So this one is definitely still a favorite. The second brow routine was using three different products. The NYX Proof It Waterproof Eyebrow Primer, the Maybelline Define a Brow in Dark Blonde, and MAC Eyeshadow in Omega. So starting with the primer, that created a really nice base for any pencil and powder to go on top of and really help it adhere to the skin and to the brow hairs. I did really, really enjoy that, but I would not consider it a favorite anymore and I never repurchased it because I prefer the NYX Eyebrow Shaper Wax Pencil. They both perform the same function, but I tend to prefer the NYX Eyebrow Shaper over the brow primer, but if you're interested in it, I would highly recommend checking it out. It is really nice quality and it definitely did do the job. Then for the Maybelline Define a Brow Pencil, that used to be my holy grail brow pencil before the NYX Micro Brow came out. I haven't repurchased it in a while, but I definitely need to. I think it is great, great quality. It is a mechanical twist up brow pencil. It is a dupe for the MAC Eyebrow Pencil. It cannot twist back down, unfortunately. The dark blonde shade is perfect for me. It is really nice and cool tone, which I love. And that draws onto your brow hair and onto skin really, really nicely. I definitely want to repurchase it and make sure that I'm still in love with it, but it is a phenomenal, phenomenal quality brow pencil. Unfortunately, I think it only comes in three shades, but the dark blonde is perfect for me. So I would still consider that a favorite. Then I have the MAC eyeshadow in Omega, which I was using as a brow powder. I totally recommend using matte eyeshadows as brow powders because they're shadows they might even be more pigmented than a brow powder and for me I love that also if you want to only fill in your brows with powder not have to put it over top of a pencil or anything then that type of product would be fantastic for you if you just use the eyebrow shaper wax pencil and then you went over top with a matte eyeshadow that would be amazing, really, really natural looking, but it will help give you the coverage that you're looking for over top of that sticky base. I love the MAC Eyeshadow in Omega. It is a very, very light, cool tone color that is absolutely perfect for blondes. That is one of my holy grail brow powders. Highly, highly recommend it. Definitely still a favorite. Next, I had a couple different eye look favorites, and this is when I had first started at that counseling job. I had an eye look that I wore on the casual weekend days, and then I had two different eye looks I would wear to our meetings, and I had a cool tone and a warm tone version. So on the casual weekends, I just popped a shade in my crease. This is the NYX Eyeshadow Single in Coquette. I have tried a bunch of these NYX Single Shadows. They are not all created equally. I do not like most of the shimmers. A lot of the mattes are okay, but this one is really nice. It's a really, really pretty, plummy, mauvey color that is such a pretty crease transition color. Absolutely love this. Highly, highly recommend it. I know the NYX eyeshadow singles are very inexpensive. This is a fantastic color. I love using this for a transition with some of my other cool tone looks, so this one is definitely still a favorite. Moving on to the more neutral glam looks, I have my warm tone look using my beloved The Balm Meat Matte Nude Palette and two different eyeshadow bases. So the base I was using on my lid is the Milani Shadow Eyes Pencil in Almond Cream. The Maybelline Color Tattoos and Milani Shadow Eyes Pencils are my top two must-have eyeshadow bases. I think they perform so well. They are so pigmented and you have to blend these out pretty quickly because they do set very fast. I absolutely love this color. It does a great job of covering up the veining in my lids, and this did create a really, really nice base. So this is absolutely still a favorite for the color and the formula. When I first started wearing this look, I was using the Milani Shadow Eyes in Cafe Olay in the crease, but I found that was a little bit too deep, so I switched over to the Maybelline Color Tattoo Leather in the shade Creamy Beige. This does create a nice base in the crease, but it isn't too dark, and it will keep my shadow from looking too intense for work. I definitely love using this as a base. I think this color is so fantastic. I do not like any of the other shades in the leathers line. They are super duper patchy and uneven, but the creamy beige shade works really well. So 
I have not worn this in the crease in a really long time. I need to try it again. Right now, whenever I use this look, I just put a base on my lid. So I'm going to try this out again. I guess I can't consider this still a favorite because I haven't worn this base in such a long time, but I do like the color and the formula. So then the shadows from the balm, Meet Matte Nude. Of course, this look and this palette is still a favorite. I would consider it to be a holy grail look and palette. So I use the shade Matte Malloy on lid and as a brow bone highlight. Matte Sing as my transition color and Matte Rosen as my crease color. A really gorgeous, all matte, warm tone, neutral eye. I love this look for an everyday basis, especially if I want to wear a more intense cheek and lip color. This is one of my go-tos. I love the formulation of these shadows. These are really, really buttery, very pigmented, really easy to work with. I absolutely love this palette. Love those shades a lot as well. Then I had my more glam, cool tone eye look, and I had two different bases for this one as well. One on the lid and one on the crease. My base for my lid was the Maybelline Color Tattoo in the shade Nude Pink. This was limited edition for a winter collection. This is supposed to be a dupe for the MAC Painterly Paint Pot, and this did create a really, really nice, light, cool tone base. It does not pull too pink on my skin tone, but the pink does show up. I would no longer consider this shade a favorite because I haven't used it in so long. Again, it's great quality, it's a great color, but because I haven't used it, I feel like I can't consider it a favorite anymore. The base I was using in my crease was the Maybelline Color Tattoo Leather and Vintage Plum. I have gotten rid of that. I decided I did not like it and it was patchy. It was a really pretty color. So I definitely do not consider Vintage Plum to be a favorite and I would not recommend that whatsoever. Then for the shadows I was wearing on top, I was using the Too Faced Naked Eye Palette. So on my lid and for a brow bone highlight, I was using the shade in the buff. And in my crease, I was using this cool tone gray shade like a version. I love that color so, so much. It performs really well. These are really nice mattes. They are pigmented without being overly pigmented. I don't find these to be powdery. So they definitely do enjoy the quality and these colors. They paired really well over those bases. I used to use the crap out of this palette and especially that look, but since I have gained more palettes in my collection, I definitely neglect this one. While I do like the quality and I like the colors, I can no longer consider this a favorite because I don't reach for this very much. My next favorite was a technique that is absolutely still a favorite. It has really changed my life. So I used to have a really, really dramatic rounded crease that did not flatter my eyes whatsoever. And then my friend Ashley recommended that I have more of a sharp, defined outer corner, not so round, more straight across, and then kind of rounded in towards the crease. And that changed my world. That really, really flattered my eye shape. So if it was not for Ashley, I'd probably still be doing my eye makeup like a hot mess. So for this technique, I would apply my shadow like normal, and then I would help clean up and get that sharp outer edge using the MAC Studio Finish Concealer in NC15 and the Real Techniques Detailer Brush. I would just take a little bit of product, go along the outer edge, draw straight up, blend out the bottom, and sharp outer corner eye makeup. So gorgeous. So I definitely still love this concealer for that purpose. I don't use that brush anymore. What I use instead is the e.l.f. Professionals $1 eyeliner brush. As you can see, this is a flat brush. So this does a even better job of getting right in this area here and creating a really sharp line and a sharp edge. So this brush, only a dollar, works perfectly with this this technique. Then I was setting that concealer in place using the Wet n Wild Single Shadow in the shade Brulee and the e.l.f. Small Precision Brush. I don't use this brush anymore. I tend to use a larger fluffy brush, but I definitely do still use this shadow for that purpose. This is an amazing matte cream color, really pigmented, smooth, buttery. I love this formula, but this shade is super similar to my skin tone. So I am able to set that concealer to help give a sharp edge, but it doesn't look too light for my skin tone. I absolutely still love this for several, several different purposes, but I do love it for the purpose I mentioned in that video. I had one lip product favorite. This is the MAC Pat and Polish Lip Pencil in the shade Go For Girly. I love this really bright pinky coral shade. This is so, so stunning on my skin tone in the summertime. Super duper flattering shade. I also really enjoy this formula. I used to be obsessed with the jumbo lip crayons, and I think these perform so well. 
These do stain a little bit, but that's not their intended purpose. They do give a nice light medium wash of color. They do have a glossy shine that makes your lips look really, really full. They do last for a decent amount of time. I have since purchased two additional shades from this line. This was originally a limited edition product, but they have added it to the permanent line, which I'm very excited about. If you guys are still interested in jumbo lip crayons, I know they aren't really popular anymore, but if you love them, I would highly, highly recommend these. I love the colors and the formula so much. Definitely still a favorite. My last two favorites are nail polishes. These are the Berry M Jelly Polishes in the shade Blueberry and Prickly Pear. And the jelly name to this does not mean our traditional jelly polishes. These are not really sheer. They are supposed to be a gel polish, really long lasting and really shiny. And I do not like these as much as I did originally. I do have to get three coats to be opaque. I wish it was just two, but I do really love these colors a lot. They are totally my kind of shades. I absolutely love pastels for the springtime, and these do last pretty long, so these aren't holy, holy grail must-have polishes, but I do think the formula is nice, and I absolutely love these shades. So guys, that was my super duper long throwback Thursday of my July favorite from 2014. I would love to know your thoughts if you tried out any of these products. Thank you all so much for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll talk to you soon. Bye guys.